Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about how to build the perfect rig for you. Let's get to it. This video is brought to you by The Cinemachine, teaching you how to make better videos and more money as a video producer. These courses help us to continue to make great content on YouTube and a percentage of the profits go to charities. Check it out at thecinemachine.com. So let's talk about why have a rig in the first place. A rig can serve several general purposes. One of the purposes can be for protection. It can protect your camera from drops, spills, etc. Another reason to have a rig is because you can hold a lot of different accessories that you're going to need for filmmaking. And then a third reason is simply functionality. And we're going to be talking about each one of those as we talk about the different components of building out your perfect rig. When DSLR and mirrorless cameras came into prominence for doing video work, and filmmaking on smaller scales, the need for a rig became essential. And the reason is because that camera doesn't have everything that you need in order to do high quality professional videos. So a camera rig allows you to build out a camera system where you can attach all the different necessary accessories in order to do your high-end work. Now where we've got these smaller cinema cameras as well that don't have built-in XLRs and ND filters and other things, a rig can also be essential for utilizing these cameras to their fullest potential as well. Now in Hollywood films and high-end commercials, you're going to see rigs on bigger cameras as well. But a lot of the times those cameras for commercial work on the lower end or even filmmaking, kind of run and gun style, you won't need to build those out quite as much because they're going to have a lot of the accessories that you need right there on the camera. Now what you need on your camera rig all depends on what you're going to be doing with your camera. And so as I go along, I'm going to be telling you what you might be able to use these different features for depending on what it is that you're doing. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a lot of different products, some of them my favorite products. And so if you're interested in any of those, you can check out the link in the description below. There are a number of videography categories that I've broken down here, and we're going to get into these in much greater detail later in the video. But these are simply creating YouTube videos and creating footage for stock footage websites where you want to sell that content. Then you've got videography promotional content, and then you've got commercials and then you've got uh, filmmaking. You've got run and gun filmmaking, and then you've got higher end filmmaking. So we're gonna get into which accessories might fit those different types of categories, which may help you depending on where you are right now in your videography and where you want to go in your videography. The foundation is the camera cage. Now there are a lot of different brands and styles of cages. Now for this particular camera, this is the Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, uh, you've got cages like this. This one is from Tilta. It's kind of a gray color. I kind of like the low profile uh, black color. This is actually just a, a cheaper magic rig cage, which is great. Um, again, this is a little bit more flashy with the gray color, but Tilta makes awesome cages, which is why this is also a very good option if you're looking at a cage for this camera or for other cameras as they make cages for various different cameras. So the camera cage will not only protect your camera, but it will also give you a lot of these quarter 20 options to put accessories on and they can also include 3 8 mounts. Now one thing that I see as very very useful if you're going to be buying a camera cage anyway is to make sure that you get a camera cage that has a handle or buy the handle as an add-on. This will do a number of things for you. It'll give you more places to connect accessories. It will give you a handle to be able to easily move your camera from one location to the next. And then it can also have these shoe mounts on it. We've got one in the back on this particular handle that we can slide shoe mounted accessories into and one on the front. And if you've got a lot of shoe mounted accessories, you can also get shoe mount extensions like this one here. It connects to the shoe mount up here and then we've got this nice wide bar and they come in a variety of different lengths. Now having the shoe mounts is really important because there are a lot of accessories that are just more easily mounted via the shoe mount. We've got shotgun microphones, we've got lights, they can be in various different sizes. And then we also have transmitters for microphones. These are just the most convenient way to mount these particular types of accessories. Another thing to consider when buying your cage is that there are generic ones out there and then there are ones that are tailored to very specific cameras. The ones that are tailored to very specific cameras generally keep open the sides where you've got card slots and the bottom where you'd be getting a battery out and in. This is obviously really important to be able to quickly change out the batteries, the cards, as well as having a dedicated opening for all of the different cords that you're going to be running into your camera. So there are other ways to mount accessories onto these cages as well. We've got, again, the 1 quarter 20 
and then we've got the 3 8 mounts which are larger and we can attach those onto our camera rig and then we can utilize for instance the quarter 20 to connect on our accessories to our camera cage. So as you can see, there are really a lot of different options to be able to mount accessories onto your camera rig. Now, if you're doing anything that's run and gun or you're doing just promotional content, things like that, a cage may be all that you need. This cage will easily adapt to either a 3 8 connector or a, a 1 quarter 20 connector on your tripod. So this whole cage can just sit on the tripod uh, as it is, and then we can rig out the accessories that we need, which is great for a lot of different styles of promotional content, uh, run and gun interview styles, documentary work, and so forth, because you wanna be quick, you wanna have it be light, and so that you can be agile as you're moving around your set. The next essential piece to your rig are the 15 millimeter rods that we're gonna be attaching a lot of accessories onto. Now, this is a long set of rails. You can also get shorter sets of rails, but these rails are really important to be able to mount a lot of your other accessories onto. And let me show you what you can do with this particular setup. So to make our rig a little bit more agile, uh, a little bit more functional for us, we can add on a shoulder mount as well as the handles up here. That will allow us to quickly take our camera off of our tripod and then go shoulder mounted with it. So let's start here at the back with the shoulder mount. There's a couple of different shoulder mount types that I really like. This particular shoulder mount is attached to our 15 millimeter rod system via our metal brackets here that we tighten down. Uh, it's got a nice pad on the bottom and this particular shoulder mount also has more quarter 20 and 3 8 mounts, which I have used to mount a V-mount battery to the shoulder mount in the back. This serves a couple of different purposes. This camera is best utilized with a V-mount power option. V-mounts are standard battery power options for various different um, filmmaking tools, including cameras, lights, etc. Um, and so having this on the back here allows us to take something like this. This is a Condor Blue uh, power cable for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which can then run directly back to our battery. This also weighs down the back a little bit so that we can better balance our camera, whether it's on a tripod or whether we're shoulder mounting it. The other type of shoulder pad that I like is this one right here. We can actually take rods and we can just slide them in. You can even just push them in through the top since it's got two slits here that we can just slide those into. That's great because it's super, super light. You can quickly take it off and on and you can use it on smaller rigs. Now, if you're shooting interviews and so forth, Everything that I've talked about already might be just perfect for you because you've got now your battery pack option, you've got a way to mount other accessories onto these 15 millimeter rods in your cage, and you might be good with just that. So if you're moving up into even higher end work like higher end commercials or films, then there'd be a few other accessories that could be very helpful for you. One of them is going to be your follow focus back here. Follow focuses are great because they will be able to turn the gears on your cinema lenses and be able to pull focus or change your aperture very easily. This is especially great if you have somebody who's pulling focus for the camera operator. The other nice thing to have would be a matte box here in the front, as I've mentioned. A matte box will do several great things for you. It will keep light from the sun and other light sources out of your lens. It will also allow you to use industry standard ND filters and other filters via these two slides right here. These slides can be pulled out. You can put your filter in there and then drop it down into your matte box. And then you're not buying a bunch of different size ND filters for your various threaded sized lenses. The reason why the matte box and the follow focus aren't critical to most styles of videography until you get to higher end stuff or maybe mid grade stuff is because you can just utilize a a lens hood which will do a similar thing to the matte box and then of course you can get ND filters for your different lenses and of course with photography lenses which are being used more and more on commercials and other projects we can simply pull focus right here on the lens. You can get a ring with gears and then we can add that to the end of our lens here and then we can use it with our follow focus. A monitor is also very, very helpful, not only for the camera operator, but on a lot of projects, you're gonna want a monitor uh, for the camera operator and then a monitor for the director, for instance. A monitor like this, this Atomos Shogun, is great because it can be quickly rotated and then we could have our uh, director DP over here 
uh, or producers watching, and then we could have our camera operator watching back here. Another great purpose of having a monitor like this is that when you are shoulder mounting a camera, that monitor on the camera is going to be back here and it's going to be off to your right, which is hard to watch. So now we've got a monitor mounted down here right in front of us where we can see what it is that we're filming. There are a number of different ways that we can mount our camera to the 15 millimeter rods. We've got things like this from small rig. We've got ones like this also from small rig. Um, there's really a lot of different options to be able to mount 15 millimeter rods onto your camera cage. Uh, this particular one down here is an adjustable one, so we can adjust the height, uh, which I think is nice. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that we can utilize a camera cage and a full camera rig. It just depends on what it is that you're doing and what your needs are. Of course, it's fun to have a big rig camera like this. You can take it out and you can impress clients. You can impress other people that you're filming with. You can go to your film buddies and be like, hey, look at my rig. I mean, a rig is really like the AR-15 of the camera world, right? We can rig it out, trick it out however we want to. But from a pragmatic filmmaking standpoint, there are a lot of things that we can do without in a lot of different scenarios and it will help us to film faster. So yes, it may look cool, it may look impressive to clients, but a lot of this stuff, if not needed for the particular situation that you're filming in, may actually serve to slow you down and to hinder your creativity. So if you're just creating content for YouTube or you're creating content that you're selling on stock footage websites, just the camera and the cage will probably be great for you. The camera cage will help to protect your camera and allow you to mount a number of different accessories that will be lightweight and keep your rig small and run and gun style for what you're doing. If you're shooting more promotional videography style videos where you're doing simple interviews and then you're doing a lot of kind of uh, moving shots to grab B-roll for your client, then the camera with the cage, with the 15 millimeter rods, may just do it for you. That may also be good enough if you're doing run and gun documentary style filmmaking or you know an independent feature film. If you're doing anything a step above that, then you may find that your matte box with your follow focus, with the cinema lenses, will be essential for what it is that you're doing. I hope that this video has been helpful. Please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.